Hi, this is Damien Hess, System Architect with Avalon Consulting, and I wanted to talk about creating content with HTML in a publishing workflow instead of XML. I've created a web application to show you what you can do with HTML, beginning with authoring. Within HTML WYSIWYG editor, I can simply type in text, um, just like a word processor. I don't really want to type. I'll load a chapter I created earlier. And if I scroll through, you'll see you can create things like headings and lists and uh, tables. And if I select some content and just highlight it, I can cut it from the WYSIWYG. Uh, and then I can scroll around and just paste that in place anywhere I want. So it really is like working in a word processor. Now, normally to use a WYSIWYG editor, you have to be online. And in fact, I've got this um, server status link. If I click on it, you'll see it comes up because I am connected to my web server. But I'm going to turn off my web server now. I just did that. OK, now when I click on this link, you'll see that uh, the page doesn't load. My web server is turned off. I'm not online. So now let me shut that tab of my browser, go back to my WYSIWYG. And even though I'm offline, I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to type in some new text. And now I'm going to click on this button for saving. Now if I reload my page, you'll see the page still comes up, and the text I saved is still visible. Now I can even shut down my web browser and uh, relaunch it and uh, go back to the URL. And even though my web server is off, the page still loads. And in fact, the content that I had saved also displays. So what's happening is HTML5 allows you to save not only your entire JavaScript application, but also your content to your local hard drive. Now I'm going to turn my web server back on so I can show you some other things. And now let me reload my chapter. Um, let's get back to content editing. Uh, let's say I've got a couple of paragraphs here, and I want those to be something special, not just paragraphs. So I've actually defined a couple of styles, like uh, I can make those a sidebar, uh, or I could, uh, let me remove that, or I could mark it up as an abstract. So I defined, uh, these are division tags, um, and I've assigned a special class to say it's an abstract. Now, similarly, I can um, identify a person. I made a little JavaScript widget, and I can mark up all the parts of the person's name, like uh, prefix, first name, last name, and uh, suffix or degree. And so there, I've just unambiguously marked up this person, this text, as a person. Now that I've marked up the content, the question is, can I use it? And the answer is yes. Um, what I just did was um, posted all of my HTML to my web server, and I've extracted the author name, the title, and the abstract. Now let me close my tab so I can go back to my WYSIWYG. Now what this means is that HTML is not just presentational anymore. It can be well structured, uh, it can have granular data, I can uh, extract information from the HTML, and I can transform it. So for example, if I wanted a proof sheet, I could click on this button. I'll send all of my HTML to my web server and transform it into a PDF. So that makes it very easy for me to preview all of my content and spot mistakes and go back and correct them. Um, now one problem with the proof sheets, uh, let me show you if I reload my content. Now if um, this is a level one heading, if I go into my uh, toolbar and I turn it into plain text, then make it bold and blow it up, now this looks like a level one heading, but it's actually just text. If I generate a proof sheet, uh, it'll look like a level one heading. Now what I would really like to do is have a way of enforcing structure. I would like to be able to say this must start with a level one heading, this must be followed by a person's name and then an abstract. And actually I can do that using a technology called Schematron. With Schematron I can write rules that let me define how the document must be structured. So now if I go back here, I know now I have to go back and turn this into a level one heading. I now know I must turn this into a person's name. And I know that this must be an abstract to satisfy the rules uh, that are defined in my schematron. So I say OK. And if I rerun the schematron button, uh, you'll see the report says, ah, look, it still says that there is an error. Here it's saying I need a last name. If I go back and I look, I see, yes, I am don't have a last name, the schematron can be very granular. And now when I hit the schematron button, uh, the report comes back all green flags. So I've authored my content, I've proofed it, uh, style checked it, made corrections. Uh, now I'm ready to publish. And for digital publishing, EPUB is an important format. 
and it turns out that uh, EPUB is actually a variant of HTML. So it's really easy to convert uh, my HTML directly to EPUB, which I just did. I've downloaded the EPUB file, and uh, I can open up an EPUB reader. I've got one in um, Chrome called Readium, and uh, I can open up that uh, publication. And here it is. Um, I had actually loaded this into my library a little earlier. So there's the title page, and there's the beginning of the chapter. So now I can close that tab. For print, it's a little bit trickier. What I want to do is uh, export the HTML uh, in a format that my paging software can understand. And right now, I just clicked a button to transform my HTML into InCopy XML. And there it is. And I am told that InCopy can be placed very easily into InDesign. So that can then be used to create my print book. So let me close that tab. So in just a couple of minutes, I've hit all the major parts of a publishing workflow from authoring to proofing to corrections and style checking and publishing to different formats, digital and print. Um, hope that's given you a couple of ideas of the way you can use HTML. And thanks very much for watching.